talk to you about memory and memories and kind of how all of this works and what we do and don't understand and how this relates overall to neural networks and LLM models. So let's dive into this. First of all, diving into what we know about memory overall and specifically about uh, neural network and LLM memory is that uh, it has characteristics that are beyond physical capacity, meaning that uh, so per um, like a per parameter within a uh, neural network, there's a physical limit as to the storage capacity that that model can store, which is two bits per, per parameter. Um, and then um, there's a physical storage limit within the neurons as well, right? And so, but uh, memory within the brain, and it seems within uh, neural networks as well, is not just tied to that physical equation. There's more to it than that. Uh, and that goes into kind of what we don't know about memory. And, and so how do I know that and what can I say about that? And so uh, just simple examples and observations. If I train a neural network on a data set and then I reset the weights completely, like I just, you know, go through one, one set of training, uh, completely reset the model, and then I do that training again, oftentimes it will perform better on that second training approach, right? Same model. Uh, readjust the weights so to the model it's like resetting its memory right like like blank memory <laughs> but but it's not like something still gets retained in that memory uh, and then I can prove this out via like uh, transfer learning <laughs> it's another very common concept and it's very related to this right and transfer learning is essentially just I train a model on a subject and then I transfer those weights very directly to a student model. And then the student model knows that information. And, and, and this process works and we don't know why it works, but we know that it works. And, and so um, within that, I kind of want to take that a step further. And then so we know that that process works, but we know that there's breakdowns within that process. So, um, for example, if I train a model on data set A and then I, I um, give it a student and transfer learn that data set from, from teacher A to student A, and then I do the same thing with uh, data set B and then I, I transfer learn data set B to the student model, all of a sudden the student model forgets data set A. <laughs> like, um, so it's just like kind of like the last input is kind of how it works. But I wanted to experiment with that and dive that down further. And, and can we utilize this in, in different ways and, and in a unique way? Um, and then so I start off this experimentation, first of all, trying to understand kind of this dynamic more. Right. And then so I call it this overall dynamic. I call it ghost memory and like meaning that there's something that occurs within this and there's like a, a ghost trace of a memory and, and, and that's what I want to isolate, right? I want to isolate the ghost memories themselves and, and, and um, can I use them? And then so the, the very first experiment that I do is essentially I take, I take a model and then I have the original model <clears throat> and then I do two experiments here. I do a clean reset and a partial reset on this model. And then meaning like a reset, meaning just fully reset the weights uh, and then a partial reset, meaning let's um, simulate collapse, like a compression of the model. And as you can see here, both of these uh, methods end up so significantly outperforming the original model, <laughs> meaning that there's something going on here, right? Um, especially with the partial reset, with the partial reset, uh, there's something that that goes on there. There's there's a ghost in the machine, <laughs> basically, right? There's there's this ghost memory that exists, and then so first experiment, I want to isolate it, like. Does this exist? And and so if, if it does exist, we'll have deviations in this data set versus the original model accuracy, which we do. So we can see there's very clearly this ghost in the machine. So let's go through and take it a step further, right? And then so the next step that I do is uh, I test the model's accuracy over time and I, I, I inject essentially like entropy and noise into the model as it's learning. And I wanna see if this impacts the weights or the learning of the model itself. And, and essentially the model adjusts to the noise and to the entropy within the environment. So what this tells me and what I start to learn within this is that whatever this uh, ghost memory, this ghost in the machine is, 
it's tied directly to the weights. Uh, I can isolate it to the weights, right? Because these external variables, uh, essentially what I'm doing in this experiment is isolating the external variables and they're not contributing to whatever this ghost memory is. So we know it's tied directly to the weights. So let's play around that with that very specifically. So the next experiment that I do is I take a data set and I train a model on it and then I, I essentially just transfer learning. Right? And then uh, I train the model on the data set and then inject those weights directly into the same model but a student model um, and then see what happens. And then what ends up happening is Exactly as I would expect with that. Not exactly as I would expect, but so the student model starts off almost immediately at 100% accuracy, like no training, right? And then so it's like um, the concept of just downloading all of a sudden this model knows Kung Fu. <laughs> and then in this instance, it's, it's a training, it's like a, it's a classifier for uh, like a moon, moon shapes. But in this instance, like this model knows Kung Fu when it comes to classifying moon shapes. Like it, it's, it comes out of the box, like with 100% accuracy, like, cause it's, it just is trained on the weights, like the, 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 uh, the weights that are injected into it, give it the information and we can train it a little bit more and it'll, it'll train, but we don't need to, right? Like that's what we're showing here is, is literally just by injecting these weights into the model by, by training one model, taking its weights, and then essentially <laughs> the math is very simple, right? So you have, we have our model and we, we initialize it with weights and, and we initialize it with random weights. And then so we always initialize it with the same random weights. And then we train the model. And then after we train the model, we have a difference between our randomized weights and the, the, the base weights and the trained weights. And then we just take that difference and we inject that difference into the student model. So the student model gets immediately to start with whatever the end weights were of the teacher model. It ends up being amazing, right? Like uh, memory transfer. Ghost memories uh, is uh, like what I call it within this. And then so I want to experiment more with this, right? Like, so uh, in this next experiment, what I do is I uh, train uh, model A on data set A, and then I inject data set A, like the, the weights from data set A into the student model. Um, and then in this instance, we're talking about different classifiers. So um, data set A is uh, moon shapes, and then data set B or task B is circle shapes. And then so uh, I train model A on to identify moon shapes, inject its weights into the student model, and then test the student model on its ability to identify circles. And then we, uh, we uh, measure like the base performance versus that injected performance. And then we can see there's significant difference, right? Injecting the uh, moon classification data has a significant impact and it improves a model's performance when it comes to circle classification data. Uh, kind of just proving that you can transfer, learn, and, and, and learn across subjects, it's that this is a generalizable concept. And then so kind of the last experiment that I want to play around with is understand this full dynamics of it, right? So as I mentioned at the top of this video, if you take data set A and then you inject it into the model and then you inject data set B into the student model, then it will all of a sudden forget data set A. But according to this whole concept, I don't think it 100% forgets. And then so that's what I want to test within this, right? And then so this to me is the most interesting experiment that we get out of all of this. And then so essentially what we see is, so we start off with um, our, our <coughs> data set A, and then when we train it, the model on and inject the model on data set A, it of course performs well on data set A, right? 96% accuracy, but then it performs horrible on data set B, 0.07%, uh, 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 and then coin flip accuracy on data set C. Uh, and then so we then do the next step. We um, train on uh, data set B, so we get up to 99%, so from uh, 0 0.07 to 99, but then we get some forgetting with A, right? A, A goes from 96 down to 24, but it could have been 0.07 as the baseline, be like the same as, as uh, B, right? So um, 
And then we notice actually a uh, decrease in performance of C at this point. So, so uh, A and C are getting worse uh, while B gets better, as expected. And then as the last test, right, the third test, um, we do this. And then so, of course, C gets astronomically good, 99%. So there's kind of like what this tells me is this stacks on each other. Like we can inject multiple times and multiple injections have some sort of positive impact. Uh, and then look at the results, right? Look uh, like A and B, uh, and look at A and B uh, compared to the previous results, like that 24% on uh, test B for A and that uh, 0.07% on the test uh, B on test A for B. Sorry, it's, it's, it gets kind of confusing, but you can see the data here. Uh, and then looking at this uh, very last test, uh, like 0 0.68, 0 0.50, and 0 0.99, right? Significant improvement across the board. So what we see is that while there is forgetting, and it's true within this transfer learning process, it's not 100% forgetting. There's some sort of ghost memory that exists within this. And then so how do you utilize this within a real world setting? Uh, to me, it's very simplistic, right? And so the very first thing I did is I, I uh, open sourced all of this. And then so uh, I call it the ghost memory system. And then how I envision this is it's a uh, modular framework. And then so I envision it kind of like books, right? And then so you take your model and then you would train it on different tasks, whatever the different tasks are, um, linear algebra, API calls, um, whatever you have a specific data set, <laughs> yeah, data set A, data set B, data set C. Um, and then you essentially like at test time, like, like, like every time that you need to do task A, then you inject weights A and then boom, it does that, right? And then if you needed to do task B, you inject weights B uh, and then, but you have the pre-trained weights and then you inject the ghost weights based off of the task that you need. Uh, and that's kind of just how this system operates, right? So it takes your base model and it's just injecting the weights. It's like rag tuning, but faster, better, uh, and it's actually updating the weights. So this method seems to be um, rag tuning plus would be the way that I would frame it. You'll get much better performance out of this method than rag tuning, and it's gonna be quicker in the end, right? You're, you're essentially, you're setting up a library in advance and you have all of your books. And as long as you have your library set up in advance and you have all of the books that you need for your library, you're good to go. <laughs> so I'll leave a link to uh, both the collab that I went through, the experiments here, uh, as well as the GitHub repository for this. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.